Hey everybody, we are joined here today. We have, we got a great conversation about to go down. We have Adam Moorhead, VP of Digital at Topcoder. We also have Sam Marazzo. Sam is the Chief Innovation Officer at BNMC, that's Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus. They were a wonderful host back in 2017, late 2017. You can see it above, uh, yeah, there it is, Sam's noggin right there. Thank you for the point, Sam for TCO 17, which is of course Top Coder Open up in Buffalo. That was a wonderful time. And we've got a great conversation going on today. It's gonna to canvas the, the power of the combination of design thinking plus crowdsourcing execution. And Sam has been leading some incredible work up in his neck of the woods. And uh, Adam has been uh, smack in the middle of it, helping to drive some customer success. So, you know, Sam, you said you're discussing design thinking and helping these larger enterprises and organizations uh, act more like a startup. And often that could be seen as like, okay, we're going to get some bean bags and we're going to have an innovation team and they're going to have the cool chalkboard walls and they often end up siloed and, and, on, and on pet projects that don't actually help innovate in a real sense and get things to market and get things done. There's a huge promise for design thinking. I know that you're a proponent of it. Uh, and in addition to that, sometimes there's executional challenges to, to making it stick and making it worthy. Can you give your POV on, on what you feel the promise of design thinking is? And then maybe maybe a bit, a little, uh, little foreshadowing onto the kind of the gap that you see that enterprises experience when they kind of only go down the path of design thinking? The, the biggest, I think the benefit you get from design thinking is if you take a step back and understand where organizations are structured today, we go to school to learn about a class, then we take a test. We're very focused on execution. I have a task, I complete the task. I have a task, I complete the task. In the world of creating a new idea or idea or an innovation, that type of mentality really is not favored because there's no basically tangible outcome. We have, we are working with this intangible concept of say an idea that may be, needs to fail and may fail 20, 30 times. Organizations need to flex their innovation muscles through tools like design thinking. A concept of divergent thinking where you think you understand a concept, and then that's basically challenged through uh, ideas in the world of design thinking. And then finally, when that idea is refined, multiple iterations, similar to the Agile process, you go through convergent thinking where the idea is then ready to go to a more mature market or a more mature platform. The current gaps we see in design thinking is, is once you have a divergent convergent outcome, you have a nice fancy wall with mind maps and some charts, but there's no way to express those charts in a creative mechanism or a creative view. We use the top coder community to take those mind maps and, and uh, ideas to uh, leverage the community of designers to deliver an actual tangible for organizations to consume versus a one-dimensional view. We get a three-dimensional view of an outcome. And within a week to week and a half, um, this to me is a disruptor for organizations that want to begin to flex their innovation muscles. The, the, the great thing about what, what Sam is doing here and what uh, the collaboration that him and I have had is figuring out how to engage the crowdsourcing community to really go and execute on uh, Sam's vision here. And uh, over at Top Coder, we've been experimenting with uh, rapid designs, rapid prototyping for a few years now, and we have customers that, that use this, but Sam saw this and said, you know, how can we put this into a workshop? How can we generate outcomes out of this workshop that has an impact on uh, not only the design thinking process, but on you know, the employees that are in this workshop and their ability to go and execute next, right? Outside of the workshop. So uh, Sam and I, we put our minds together and we said, hey, we don't need, we want something at a wireframe level, but we want something a little more than a wireframe, but we don't need something at a high fidelity level. So how can we ask the crowd to come back with um, designs, visuals, wireframes? And we really settled in on this idea of design concepts and really kind of what we call now design direction. So can we ask a community to take the inputs from, or the outputs from a design thinking workshop and quickly iterate on that and have that workshop be able to consume those, uh, those outcomes from the community 
and react to them. And so we have this now, this, this design direction where within, uh, in our process, within 12 to 15 hours, we can get really, really fast thoughts back. And these are not necessarily high fidelity finished results because it's so quick, but it's, it's our community um, looking at the workshop outputs and really just bringing a new look to it. And this is not just one person or two people, right? We're looking at 10 to 15 different people who are contributing to those ongoing workshops. Sam, you know, it was great really kind of figuring out this process with you, um, being that I have a, a strong passion for design and really trying to figure out how to get this into these kind of workshops. What's your thoughts on kind of that, that process of like you are in the workshop and you, uh, you have the, the whiteboards and you have the mind maps and you have the prototyping that's, or the sketches that are going on um, and the videos and then the ability to hand that off to a crowd. Like, like what, what part of that was uh, uh, you know, really useful for you, inspiring for you, or what, what, what part of that was uh, um, impactful? The impactful state is that you're, the, the group, the, the, the workshop was focused on a variability of thought. You had the business owner, you had the, the actual users of the actual use case, and they would all collaborate in one room, and we would challenge those ideas and thoughts. We would bring in other groups within our innovation center to basically ask and walk through that mind map, and then from there, we would polish that. And what that gives us is the ability to really clarify, and this is what's about design thinking, Convergence is about clarifying, and we convergently work together to clarify the design until we are ready. This is a day and a half workshop, and what that does for everyone is they see the life cycle from a workshop to actual tangible outcomes very quickly. So this, again, is this disruptive in this industry? Probably is, because you typically get to a outcome on a, and a design map that's one dimensional to an outcome that is visible, visible, clickable, and understandable. And we all learned that if we prepare the package for your community, their work is improved, you get better outcomes, clarity. So if you think about what we did with the design thinking opportunity, it was divergent thinking for the community because they didn't understand at first what the outcomes were. As we clarified and converged, it got better and better. So it really was a win-win for the business sponsor and your community to come out with a very succinct, focused design that met their business requirements. When, uh, you, know, when you put your workshops together, you're bringing in employees from a, from a corporation and you're asking them to essentially sit down and maybe they work, they work closely together or some of them maybe don't work as closely together and you're asking them to sit down, be open, work together for a few days in a design thinking workshop. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that process? Because I know you go a little beyond just the design thinking workshop. You guys introduce other uh, aspects into your workshop. So can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, sure. So what happens in the workshop is we ask the corporation, we sit down and we, we, we talk about some of their pain points and we talk about for their organization, some folks get bonuses, some folks get promotions. We ask their organization to select some of their employees that would really be helpful in a workshop. Maybe they're in a rut, maybe they need another, uh, another look at uh, design, maybe they're confused in their career, whatever it may be. We then, after selections happen, we do a pre-assessment of each team member through this uh, pre-assessment tool, and it's the foresight tool. Once that is done, the, the teams are then are selected and we, we focus our training based on the outcome of that test because we break the teams apart based on their, you know, their propensity towards, say, clarifying. If they're too much of a clarifier, you don't want too many clarifiers in a creative project. So we split them up. And then from there, we ask the teams, we introduce teams to design thinking efforts. We uh, then go through, ask for their best ideas and we, make, we may start with 10 ideas and we, we get down to one or two ideas that their organization could use to go through a actual design thinking session. So what this is doing in essence is doing two things. There is a outcome that is specific to the corporation or the company that is specific to a, you know, a, a pain point. Number two is each employee is understanding this concept of design thinking 
and embracing the concept so they can go back and re-look at things in a different lens. Their lens is, it could be like, hey, I never thought of that problem that way. So we're teaching, helping, mentoring their organization become better at creating ideas. We want to be the idea factory for organizations because there's two ways you can, you know, grow a company's, you know, either you grow the top line or you, um, you restrict or optimize the operations. It's really difficult to find new opportunities on the revenue side. Our, our concept is let's try to figure out how we can create a new business model or a new business opportunity with our own people versus using a third party consultant to come up with these concepts. Our best resources are the best resources are company employees who understand the domain of that organization. If they understand their domain, they're the best bet an organization has to create new and great opportunities to disrupt or enhance their revenue streams. Hey Sam, some great points there. Thank you for that. So you you also mentioned that, you know, traditionally it might be, hey, go external and go get consultants to come in and, you know, whatever it might be, review processes and try to get around what can be innovative. And you're making the strong argument that instead, really your most innovative people are, are really sitting inside already with domain. And then you're, of course, uh, putting this process together to, to bring that out of them. I think that's, I think it's awesome, brilliant. Can you give a little bit of a, a flavor to, to folks watching? What are kind of traditional timelines? So if you are going the consultant route, how often does that typically take? And then versus what, what you do when you get in with, with your customers, understand what they need to do, structure their workshop, and it kind of give a, a apples and oranges from a, a timeline perspective. It, it, I think that'd be useful for folks uh, enjoying this. Yeah, so I just reference what we just did with the telemedicine app, uh, what we did with just Top Coder over the summer. We completed that within you know, under three weeks, basically polishing it up. It was all done basically a week and a half. But most importantly, the outcome of meeting the business flows, understanding the, you know, the ins and outs of role relationships and flow relationships are very complicated. Uh, and creating up very, uh, would you say, design directions with high fidelity would have taken a local firm because this business owner shopped it out and said, well, what he asked a local agency who does this um, basically regularly and said, well, well, how long do you think this would have taken? And they said, this is basically a 14 week to 16 week project and this, this works excellent. So he said to him, no, it took three weeks. And we're, we're looking at like the outcome is one thing. The other, what we discovered is it was 14 weeks. Basically it's not linear, right? It's 14 weeks of time. Um, it probably would have been basically a little longer by the time, you know, you have, there's people that are part time on projects. They're not ready, set, go. These projects are teams of folks on, you know, internal marketing firms that don't have that, would you say, flex resource like a top coder model would have. So that's really what we're seeing is the advantage of a, of a very, I wouldn't just call it a crowd of designers, I would call it a optimized, very focused organization that is designed to deliver. Hey Sam, what I, what I love about that is that, yes, you know, that ended up taking about three weeks on that project. And originally when we, did that design direction, you know, we had 10 designers engaged, right? We ended up working with a single designer who won that we worked with them because their concept stood out amongst the, amongst the other nine. But within, I think the original um, design direction challenge, we had initial results within 12 hours, within 24 hours, we had just final direction and your customer was obviously impacted by the amount of concepts coming back to him. And you know, just a key thing there is that uh, within the top credit community, the designers are opting in. They're seeing the type of work that you're bringing, all of all the top credit customers are bringing, but the types of problems that you're bringing to them. And then they're opting in to say, hey, this is something interesting that I want to tackle. Uh, I may have some different ideas and concepts on how to do this. And you know, it's a, it's a global community of designers and I just wanted to highlight that to, uh, to everyone out there that um, this process attracts a lot of different great minds and the types of projects like the telemedicine and the, and the two that we're going to talk about here definitely 
uh, engages a lot of different designers around the world. Uh, Sam, I had a, a, one other question here. When um, going back to just, you know, in the design thinking process, you know, we, we, we're supposed to empathize with our, our user, right? I want to kind of talk a little bit about just uh, empathizing with the people that you're bringing into these workshops, right? So you're bringing employees together, you're, uh, you're, you're doing a, a variety of things with them, and then all of a sudden you're saying, okay, we're now going to put your ideas out to this community to, to get a variety of more work back, right? So you're, you're essentially kind of bring, bringing a lot of new concepts at one time. So how do you kind of work through kind of that, I would say kind of mind explosion around different different ways of working, right? And one more point, while there's a amazing opportunity for customers to work directly with designers in this process, we have multiple winners. So there's winner uh, at the checkpoint. So at the 12 hour or 24 or 36 or 72 hour step, there's initial prizes handed out. And then there's also at the end of the challenge, we just don't have a single winner. We typically have between one to three or one to five. Uh, and in some of our really fast uh, challenges, we have between eight. Uh, so it's just want to make that clear that this, this process has been refined over many years. And uh, it isn't just about um, a single prize. It's about, of course, rewarding uh, the designers for their ideas, their concepts, and then of course, allowing customers, Sam's customers, to uh, to be able to, to pick from the, the variety of concepts and move forward. I think that's a great point, Adam, and something that is super important for just folks to understand that it is it is equitable. And then, like you said, too, it's been refined over years to understand and actually studied via research so that it is it is equitable, that it is fair and empathetic, you know, empathetic to others who are coming in, self-selecting into work that, you know, they, they understand as an individual there there may be risk there for them, but they're willing to take that risk and they want they want to do the work because it's intriguing to them. And having more shared prizes is is a really, really just fair way to do it. And I, I hinted at uh, empathy there. I know in design thinking, so Sam and Adam. In design thinking, it's all about getting into the shoes of the end customers and, and having that sense of empathy. I know that you both wanted to talk about that as, as a topic point. Sam, yeah. I'll pass it to you. What's the, or, or Adam, if you want to frame it differently, how does empathy play in traditional design thinking and how this sets up for this accelerated success when you do what you're doing, Sam, as you combine the design thinking workshop with the accelerated delivery that you're getting through Alcoder. So as far as the, the approach, I mean, there's a, it's a two pronged approach to solving and again, flexing the innovation muscles. So again, we, a lot of our, we go to college, we go get a job where no one teaches you to be innovative. No one teaches you to create a, we have ideas, but ideas like everyone has one to be able to take an idea and take an approach and, and um, bring it to, to a market or bring it to fruition is amazing. Uh, now, in order to do that, you gotta be, you gotta be based, there's some training on design thinking. Secondly is, you, your organization's gonna select you to be into a, an opportunity in a workshop to learn how to design think. This is a new skill. It's not project management, it's not program, it's design thinking. Employees embrace any new learnings. Uh, we call this the soul multiplier because what happens is you get a chance, a special chance to come into a lab, a workshop, and learn how to create ideas, which is like back to like being in a preschool again or, or an elementary school, put Legos together, understand ideas. This multiplier effect is amazing. We went back and asked some of our um, employees and went through the program at some of the corporations and they couldn't tell you how much, how proud they were to go through this workshop because we saw this multiplier effect, right? We saw the employee was met a expectation of my goal is was to put a product together. But what we saw was this intangible was the, the employee was so satisfied that they were trusted enough to go into a workshop and learn about this new concept of design thinking and then be able to deliver and now go back to the organization and teach and talk about what an experience they are able to achieve from this. So it's not just about putting a product together, it's really about employer retention, employee and setting expectations for the employees that you it's a benefit for you and our organization to come through our lab. And you may just not only learn about design thing, you may be able to deliver a product.
Hey, Sam, great stuff right there. I think it'd be really helpful to crystallize this for the folks viewing this by, you know, talking about one of your most recent workshops. Do you have one at the ready you could uh, dive into? Yeah, we'll, just, we'll talk about a, a workshop we did with a local corporation here in Buffalo, their multi-billion dollar company. They wanted to talk about not only about delivering a solution to their organization, but be able to kind of work in that mentality of startup mentality that will be able to let them flex their innovation muscle and be able to go back and inspire and um, their own team. So we sat down with the CIO and said, we have another kind of solution for you. And uh, what we'd like you to do is start thinking about a project that you could bring to our innovation lab that we can help you uh, solidify. And, and, and we told them up front that these projects, we would like to see two teams participate. So we broke, the, broke them up in two teams. They all took the assessment. Uh, and then from there, uh, we went through a, um, a, a couple exercises before they even started. We did an improv, a visit, we did an improv uh, workshop. Uh, we did some painting. And then from there, we jumped right in with the design thinking workshop for a day and a half. So, um, so Sam, as part of that, you uh, so you broke them in, up into two teams. So the teams went through; they they picked names, uh, kind of created an identity for themselves in that in that way, right? To to create teamwork. And uh, one of them, uh, they were they were called Queen City, and the other one was called Disruptors. And what was the process to you, you did the the kind of the prelim process, but what was the process to kind of narrow down? the the two ideas that they wanted to work on you know like anything else we leveraged the lab again a, a divergent thinking they they i said be, be prepared to bring as many ideas you would like to as a team and we gave them time to then go from you know again diverge to converge so convergence you know they came with four ideas they struggled uh, kind of stormed a little bit they you know they went from norming to storming back and forth a little bit of aggravation but finally we put we we helped with our own domain expertise to finally separate the two teams where they had one project to then start the, the design thinking workshop yep so one of them uh ended up focusing in on this idea of interior wayfinding so this idea of being able to uh, not only you know we're all very familiar with obviously wayfinding and um, but this is more of the interior where you're inside a very large uh, stadium or uh, airport or possibly a national park casino but the idea of being able to um, use uh, your your phone your your mobile device to essentially be able to uh, to get around in, in, internally in a in a in a space um, and to to help you in that experience. So that was one of the ideas, and of course, when we start thinking about that, you start getting into a lot of applications for that, not only for uh, the public, but also possibly for deliveries and, and employees and things like that, the ability to understand like what's the quickest way to get from point A to point B to point C or A to C. Uh, and then the other one ended up focusing in on um, more of like how, how within, within a business, within an enterprise, how can you really kind of come up with concepts and ideas and really really promote those ideas inside um, the enterprise and really leverage the employee base uh, really to, uh, to kind of um, grow the business and, and get new, new um, ideation internally because obviously a lot of these large enterprises have hundreds of employees. So any thoughts on those two ideas or any, any background on those two ideas? When we did approach the CIO of the organization, we said he would, I would say you should probably pick one idea because like any startup, it's a startup competition and you know we like a little bit of competition between both teams they put a little you know uh, they focused on it they they work together after the event to really polish it and those two ideas were were basically so good that uh the cio approved both of them to move forward to try to uh, move again the um one of course is what's the big idea or how do we capture ideas and reward our organization for ideas that were captured meaning rewarding is a good idea, you know, got X amount of either days off or, uh, or swag in their store. So it was crowdsourcing from their own organization uh, was the, or the first concept. And the second, of course, the wayfinding. This concept, what we thought, what we learned was um, because we're so focused in the convergence side of things, M MVPs are really focused on one part of the business or one part of an idea or a, a concept, we were so good at one point of coming up with new features in the application that 
at what we basically had to draw a line in the sand because like Adam referred to is a concept of wayfinding within an organization. There are a lot of concepts you can add that makes this solution a little overwhelming. So our job was to focus on convergent thinking, ensure we had MVP, so it was within bite size uh, piece of, of a requirement versus a large meal. So that was the difference between the two projects. But what we learned was, even though they were competing with each other, they both helped each other out during the competition. They have been such a great resource for us and every time we see them out or in their organization it has been a great bond that we've created through this workshop versus we're just building you an app and i think that's the the outcome here is we not only build you an app or platform we build relationships and we teach them how to do it themselves and basically eat their own dog food or with your platform and that's really our goal here I think uh, one of the, I'd like to get to kind of the timing of this so everyone has, an, has a better and, and clear understanding around the reality, right? So when we talk about design thinking workshops, I've been part of many design thinking workshops that might be a week long exercise with a large enterprise. It may be a, a one day kind of team get together just to, to solidify something. Uh, maybe a two or three day engagement, right? So and I know that you have to work within those timelines that our, your potential customer may allow their employees to spend with you, right? Um, so I think when we talk about the, just the design thinking workshop, how much time was kind of the initial workshop before we, you engage the, the top care community? Physical on time, butts and seats, about a day and a half. Uh, we did a little pre-work to understand so they can start thinking via email. We came up with a lot of emails about just pre-thinking your ideas. So there was some, a lot of remote, but butts and seats, a, 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 so it was a full day and a half of design thinking with taking your concepts and putting them into in, into an overall like outcome. But remotely, we could say that a lot of the, we the expectations for the workshop was that this was going to be done remotely because this, and it, again, a leveraging crowdsourcing and this new way of work, they had to understand that is what we use tools like Slack for. So some of the work a remote was probably, I say a couple days, but they can go to work, answer questions, and then wait for the outcome. And then the top quarter part, which is once, uh, once they, the team was together, uh, they did the exercises, they came up with some maps, they came up with some you know, different whiteboarding outcomes. They did a couple videos around their ideas. We then put that to the Top Critter community. And uh, the way that worked was once we received it from the team, we put it into our Top Critter community. The designers were able to see this design brief that talked about this design direction request. And we provided those outputs from the design workshop, which is like the key thing here is like without those, without those outputs, it'd be hard to explain what it is that we're trying to do. So awesome material for getting this up and running. 15 hours later, designers were submitting their, what we call checkpoints. So we ended up having um, wayfinding. We had 10 designers submit checkpoints 15 hours later. And this was a variety of ideas uh, taking the design workshop outcomes and expanding on them and bringing new new ideas. And our designers are all over the world. So they're looking at this problem that maybe we may think is unique here in the US, but you know, it's, it's people all around the world trying to empathize, put themselves into that situation, understand what's happening. And they provided uh, initial uh, designs. And then the team on, on the ground looked at those, uh, worked together as part of that workshop, and then provided feedback within five hours back to those designers. Uh, and then the next day we had final design directions, which of course those teams were able to then take farther and refine even more. But the, the level of effort from the community and of the ability to get a variety of concepts within, you know, this was essentially with a 24 to 36 hour window within the time frame of your workshop, I think is pretty amazing and, and pretty impactful. Thanks Adam for the kind words. I think it was not just, you know, we had our boots in the ground. We have design thinkers. We have uh, Jen Ritling on my team. We have myself really understanding the, the, the reality of what their outcomes were, but we brought in other, not thought leaders, but millennials, Gen Zs, to look at the problem statement before we sent it off to the community. So we have a lot of eyes and ears 
on this on this concept and from there the crowd would then it was very focused for the community in top coder to quickly understand and consume it it was very important that adam and i were were in tune during this thing it was very fast and furious but the customer was overwhelmed by the quality and the out, outcome and output to a point where they want to do it again and again. For them, this is exactly what they everyone believes they can do. But right now, their only tool they use are probably a SketchUp tool or Word or Excel. We want to be, again, their creative design department to drive new innovations for them to look at new opportunities for their organizations. Awesome. Awesome discussion there, Sam and Adam. Thank you both uh, for taking the time to, to, uh, to dive into this. What I love the most about this is the, the innovation on, on top of the existing platform. TopCoder is full of opportunity and, and really a wonderful way to access and get to incredible talent and, and use it very, 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 very quickly and, and with great effect. It's always impressive when folks like you, Sam, come along and see the opportunity and then and then mold it into something brand new. You kind of took design thinking, mashed it up with what Top Coder is, with the, the accelerant that it could be, and you created something brand new that you're now delivering to customers, uh, you know, mainly up up in your, your neck of the woods up there in Buffalo, and I guess really wherever they want to uh, ask you to come do it. But I think it's a powerful combination. Really want to applaud you for thinking through this, working with our team and coming up with, with a new way to take design thinking and place crowdsourcing right at the heart of it so that the, the executables, the, the, the delivery and the impact for those that you're, you're serving is just that much more effective and that much more important. So, hey, Sam, can you let folks know who, who are viewing this, if they want to get in touch, what's the best way to reach out to you? Yeah, the best way to reach out to me is smarazzo at bnmc.org. You can find me on LinkedIn. Appreciate the uh, opportunity to talk about some of the things we did here in, in Buffalo. And we can go on the road as well. We can go on a road show and help you out and help you, your organization um, flex their innovation muscles. Awesome stuff, Sam. Thank you so much. We'll make sure we put that on the screen, uh, your, your credentials out there and, and ways that people can reach out. And we do encourage those to do so. Sam is really strong with this and has come up with some fantastic concepts. So we'll wrap here. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this innovation conversation with one of our great partners, with Sam at BNMC, and, of course, us at Topcutter. Thanks a lot.